Hi, I'm Rebecca Rosen, a spiritual medium and best-selling author. For almost 25 years, I've been serving as a messenger for spirit and helping people strengthen their own intuition. Join me as we continue to explore, heal, and ascend through episodes centered around your questions, channelings from spirit, and powerful conversations with my friends and colleagues. Season three has taken us on a journey, and I couldn't be more grateful for the opportunity to share these episodes with you. It's become tradition at the end of my podcast seasons to do a wrap-up episode showcasing some of the best parts of the season. This highlight reel, if you will, has clips from the Q&A and guest episodes so that you have the best of season three all in one place. If you've listened to all of the episodes, you probably observe the four big themes at play, energy maintenance and healing, co-creation or manifestation, intuition development, and soul contracts. These are the areas that I keep getting asked about the most and that my guides have continually been helping me advance in. My mission in doing this work is to also help make these concepts and practices feel more accessible to you so that you can continue learning and growing on your own spiritual journey. I hope that these episodes have helped you learn more about yourself and the unseen world around you ascend higher into your own spiritual practices, and gain confidence in your own connection to something bigger. At the end of the day, you are surrounded, loved, protected, and guided by a divine team. We can fully experience the magic and miracles that this earth school experience has in store by looking at life through a lens of love, finding moments of peace and joy, and surrendering to the assistance and outcomes that are bigger than ourselves. Thank you for joining me for this season and for allowing me to be a part of your spiritual journey. Until next time, wishing you brightest blessings and all love. What is the best way to heal from loss, sadness, and or guilt after a relationship has ended and returned to a state of high vibration? Is there a way to reset our energy quickly? Well, This is a great question because it's universal, right? We all have different life experiences, but in the end, we're all connected and one and the same. And that is we all have feelings and well, most of us do, but we all have gone through different situations where we have felt loss. We have felt sadness, depression, um, you know, guilt after a relationship ends, whether it's a death or it's a breakup or divorce um, or, you know, somebody canceling you or you them, you know, whatever that looks like. You know, there's that saying, and I have it in a couple of my books, people come into our life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime. But with our soul contracts, it is so often that it's only for a reason or season. And there's going to be, you know, a parting of ways, an ending and you you know you wouldn't be human if you didn't feel some some negative heavier denser energies emotions like sadness and loss and guilt or pain you name it so this is really about relationships when you're talking about energy um think of your chakra system your energy centers Your second chakra, okay, and it's located in your pelvis just below the navel, your second chakra really deals with um, emotions tied to relationships and other people. It's also your sexual center. Um, And so especially if it's an intimate relationship, you're going to have cords, these etheric cords form. Now, depending on how intense the relationship, you know, if it's a really intense relationship where you've been together for a very long time or a short period of time, but it was really intense. It was hot and heavy. The cords are going to be really giant, really thick. Think of like giant trees. There's big and tall and thick as tree trunks. But for other relationships that come and go pretty quickly, um, they may be thinner like dental floss, okay, or a garden hose or, but regardless, if there's cords, You've got to cut the cords. 
And you can only cut fear-based cords. I know a lot of clients, when this comes up, they're afraid. They don't want to cut the cords of the love-based cords. You can't. Love doesn't die. Those are eternal. Okay. So it's only the fear-based cords, the ties that drain you, deplete you, that disempower you, that you're releasing. So there's a lot of ways to cut cords. Um, you can do it, you know, through intention by intending the cords to be cut. You can call in Archangel Michael to help you cut those cords. You can work with an energy healer who can help you release these cords. But basically what it comes down to is calling your energy back, okay? I created a new meditation series for this purpose. And in the morning practice and the evening practice, two separate um, meditations, I have calling your energy back and there's a prayer to, in a sense, cut those cords, okay? And so that is one very important way. Another thing is to reframe the situation, okay? So ask yourself, you know, after this relationship has ended, um, not why did this happen to me, but what was this here to teach me? And how do I create balance here? So when you hear yourself ask why, stop yourself, okay? And ask yourself and said, what? Not why, but what? What do I need to know? What was this here to teach me? And how? How do I create balance here, right here, right now from this? So that takes you out of a victim state, out of this very low vibration, a very disempowered state, okay, where if you do stay in the why, you're going to continue to run around in a spin cycle of the shame and blame and judgment, the heaviness that you're feeling, the burden, weight that you're feeling energetically, maybe even physical weight that you're holding on to, but it's stuck energy. And when you do that, whatever you vibrate at, you attract. So if you continue to swim around in that spin cycle, you better believe it. You're going to attract another situation that mirrors back that same energy frequency. Okay? Well, that's the last thing we want to do. And so what we want to do is be able to get neutral. Okay? And so we're able to step back and say, okay, what was this here to teach me? And how do I find balance now? How do I create balance with this? And from there, you know, you will be guided. You will receive the guidance that you need in order to heal it and neutralize it so that you can move forward in a very empowered and high vibrational state. And so at the end of the day, it really comes down to blessing the situation, seeing it as a gift, okay? Um, thanking that person, that situation for showing up and being one of your greatest polishing stones or teachers so that you can grow and evolve into your highest and best self. Well, I just want to touch on one more point, and that is a lot of clients are asking me about protection. And I recently heard this great quote, the best protection from the things you're afraid of is a higher vibration. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so... I would just ask you, like, what's the one prayer affirmation or mantra? What's your go-to that you can offer offer listeners to help raise their vibration and in turn protect their energy? So one thing I would say, and I'm going to be a stickler here a little bit because I do it myself. I wouldn't say that it's a higher vibration because what that says is that I believe in the hierarchy of vibration. And mm -hmm. It's just either or light or shadow, right? It's, and, and my ear it, just started ringing, by the way. So <laughs> that is definitely spirit telling you, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to say, you know, how do I calibrate my energy and attune and align to the divine forces? Love it. And when I'm attuned to the divine, I am safe. So one thing I say is a prayer, please divine spirit, guide me, protect me and direct me, fill me with light and love, show me the way with messages I will understand. So my every thought, word and action is a reflection of my divinity and only my divinity. And amen. then I say, thank you, thank you, thank you, amen. The other thing I say is that I, I'll walk around if I feel uneasy, 
I sense, remember our feelings are frequencies there. It's a message to tell us what's present, what state of being is trying to materialize or is materializing in the moment. That's what our emotions are. It's a materialization of a state of being and energy frequency. And if I feel dis-ease, that means that there's a shadow knocking on my door or from within me being lit up meaning something's coming toward me that's igniting in me where I'm shadow. Remember electromagnetic, there's a fear somewhere. Okay, what is this? What is this? And if I can't figure it out, it's not that I want to know why. I'm not going to ask why is this because that's what the shadow wants. I'm going to say, what is this? So I always stop and say, divine spirit, what is this? Mm. What am I to know about this? And if I don't get an answer right away, I don't worry about it. But what then what I do say is only divine energy may be in my presence. Only divine energy may be in communication. I am in agreement with the divine and only the divine. That's my other prayer to keep myself safe. The brighter you are, the more you are in your light, the safer you are. Your light protects you. Hmm. Again, we are electromagnetic. Does that mean that when you are protected, that something isn't going to happen, something may happen. It may happen because it's what needs to happen so you can see the miracle that's within you. We don't know the whole truth. So what we may think is safe and protected may not be exactly what our soul needs. But when we're safe and protected, what we're saying is whatever comes my way it's going to be for my growth and evolution. Whatever comes my way, may it be for my growth and evolution as a divine being. Mm, and, and, and so, but from interference, those forces that intend harm, if you can hold, remember, we're in a process of learning to sustain the vibration of light for as long as we possibly can. Enlightenment means I am in a, I have, I have practiced and I am calibrating my energy field wholly and totally in the light. Every atom and all four layers of my being are harmonized in frequencies of love. I can hold on to that for five minutes. Oh, that's pretty good. I practice. I practice. Now I can do 10. Now I can do 20. Now I can do a week. Now I can do whatever. What we're wanting is to be able to be in the light at all times. That is the being a master of light and becoming an enlightened being. It's about building the resiliency. And that goes back to the energy hygiene, just like you want to run a marathon. You're not going to go run 26 miles. You're going to run, you're going to walk a mile. Then you're going to maybe walk, you know, two miles. And then you're going to run a mile and walk a mile. And you're going to keep practicing and keep practicing and keep practicing it is not like you get to an end. Right. It's that you it's hold, a practice. Yeah, but you hold a capability. Mm. And and so if you want to be safe, then commune with the energy of light, divinity. Well, lately my guides keep reminding me for protection rather than protect, project, project awesome. light. Isn't that great? It's awesome. I know. And so it's just be light. Please explain co-creation and how we know if it is working. We are always in co-creation with the universe or the divine of our reality. Okay. And now more than ever, because the veil is thin between dimensions. Um, Our planet is shifting and more and more everyday people are waking up to their ability to tap into this, um, tap into their soul knowing and their soul contract for their life. So when I do readings, what I'm doing is I'm tapping in to people's soul contracts or the loose blueprint for their life that they signed up for and all the lessons that they're here to learn. And I sense what's in the cards for, you know, whoever I'm reading And I always like to remind my clients, you know, whatever comes through, just remember it's not set in stone. It's only a probability or potentiality in your energy field. And you have the opportunity to create it. There's potential because you're holding the vibration of it. 
And so what I'm doing is I'm presenting potential outcomes of what could be. And if you don't hold the vibe, it's going to be a miss though, right? So I can't read your future into being. You have to bring it into being. Uh, But it's fluid, much like water, you know, and if you go with the flow and you stay attuned to this intention, you will likely manifest it, whatever the desired outcome is or life. And so going back to the idea that we create our own reality, when we get out of trust and faith and we go into fear, we change what's on deck, okay? This is when we go into effort, controlling, projecting worry, doubt, and anxiety, and then acting out of shadow and fear. In addition, we are dealing with free will choice. And oftentimes this involves the free will choices of others involved in the situation, which can affect the outcome of any situation. So if you are in alignment, but someone else involved is not, and they're not going with the flow and the divinely intended plan, it can definitely alter the outcome. However, if it's truly meant to be for you, this is when spirit goes to plan B. It finds an alternate way or it reroutes you to your desired and intended destination. That's why it's key to not get too attached to how it plays out and just stay focused on the what and the why behind it, okay? Trusting that somehow, some way, you will create the dream come true. So in readings... Spirit offers what you most need to know that's in your highest and best good in that moment of time for you and for all others involved. And just because predictive information is offered, there's work around it that you need to do to make that probability a reality. And so if something, you know, is ever predicted, whether from an intuitive you work, you've worked with or from your own higher self's guidance, and it didn't play out according to your plan, remember that sometimes your rejection is your protection. Sometimes it just means God has a better plan in store for you because things have shifted based on outside circumstances that you can't control. Or sometimes it means go back to the drawing board and pray on it, meditate on it, but from your heart and tune back into the feeling you're after of this desired dream. Because if it's truly meant to be, if it's truly in your highest good, then the universe will reroute you and get you to your final intended destination. And so your work is to ask the divine, what is it I need to know and then do in order to have it? And then follow the guidance. Stay in the frequency of faith and trust. Let go, let God knowing that what's highest and best for your soul's growth and evolution will come about. And that's why we're here at the end of the day. So the second part of this question is, how do we know if it is working? Well, it's really about taking a step back and observing and taking an objective observation of your life. And you have to get neutral in order to do that, right? You have to get out of the mind's linear um, polarity thinking of good, bad, right, wrong, positive or negative, you really need to step back and in order to gauge if all the hard work that you're doing is paying off, what spirit has taught me is that it comes down to these two things. The first one is the flotastic factor, I like to call it. So Are you experiencing signs, synchronicities, miracles, seeing all the breadcrumbs along your path, you know, on a regular basis? So when your life gets flotastic, all of the miracles start happening and you just start to expect them as everyday natural occurrences, which they're meant to be, by the way, because it builds momentum, all right? It's an energy and it starts snowballing. And the second thing is you want to pay attention to how you feel, okay? Your feelings are your guidance. So generally speaking, you know, check in with yourself and see, am I feeling, for the most part, good, positive, you know, am I in a state of allowance, or am I feeling kind of negative, off, anxious, afraid, depressed, and in a state of resistance, okay? Our feelings serve as indicators that 
you know, whether we're in complete alignment with our higher self or not. Um, I have to share this. So I have an online vision board that I created and every morning I pull it out and you stare at it and it does subliminal flashing where, you know, mm. it's putting it into your consciousness because I'm a specific manifester. I have to, you know, for some people they're not, my husband's not at all, but I am visual. So I create vision boards. So I've been using my, I've been, uh, Barb, who is so generous, gifted me these amazing mm. bowls. And I've been using them and I put them on my lap in the morning and I watch my board and I use the bowl to open, expand the doorway to speed up the manifestation. And I kid you not, there were two things on my board that specifically hadn't happened. And within a week, they both happened. <laughs> and it's so powerful yes. how yes. intention, yes. clear intention yes. aligned with doing the divinely guided work, right? Yes. Whatever it is that you feel is true to you. Like you said, sound may not be for everybody. Vision boards may not be for everybody, but find the tools that work for you and then get crystal clear on your intention. Get out of your head, get into your heart, right? And feel it and allow it, make space yes. for it. Yes. The interesting thing for me is that time is often out of my hands. I can't tell you why or how, but I know now just to put forth an intention. I write a goal book every day. So I write my goals for, and the number four is, is important for me. So every four days, I, I write out my goals for four days, four weeks, four months, four years. Mm -hmm. And um, I have some really wacky things in my goal book of what I envision to happen. And I have to say, most everything through the years has occurred at the right time. Yeah. So, uh, thank, and I thank God, because I would have, if I had had all this stuff happen 25 years ago, 30 years, I would not be prepared to uh, have a rich experience with it. So, you know, sometimes people have a relationship to time differently. Just know that if your energy is focused on the purity of heart, that you are, that your day is your manifestation. My day today is a, and I'm going to be meeting people that I really enjoy. I uh, I see myself eating foods that make me feel so alive. My animals are just, are, are literally cleaning the house. <laughs> right. Perfect. All right. All right. All right. That's a stress. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you set that intention and you will uh, notice that that is exact exactly the day you have what that does is seed forward so you're planting seeds that says i'm in a state of well-being i'm constantly in a state of well-being i am always moving into around and through the things i love now you have set that that template up with everyday thinking in the presence of of having a joyous day or maybe joy is too much for you maybe it's just having a a pleasant day or maybe it's a day of of just being restful mm. and the, and you don't have an ebullient kind of experience that's great that's great it's all good and that leads to the next day to the next day so you are literally planting seeds and what the sound does is work with the energetic seed planting because when you're making these tones, the alpha theta brainwave state has produced a highly suggestible state of availability. So you're dropping these little seedlings of new thought, new ideas into that nourished, rich mulch of I'm available, I'm ready, and I know myself to be a magnificent human being. And wow, that's, that's worthy and deserving, right? Mm, yes, that's everything. It yeah. is. It, you really have to claim your worth and believe you deserve. And then the universe, it mm. makes space to receive and, and you will, you know, and one more thing I like to remind listeners is that whenever I'm asked for something, whether it's through the feeling I'm looking at a vision board or I'm writing out my intentions, I always say this or something more in divine yeah. timing and order, right? Yes. And for the highest and best good of myself and all involved. Because yes. that way you're bypassing your ego where we place limitations or judgments 
And you're basically surrendering my will to thy will. May thy will be done. Yeah. I mean, it's really, yeah, it's, and it was very hard for me to extract my projections from outside in and realize that I'm a turnstile. I'm everything. I am the one that's creating this. So if I improve my transmitter, mm -hmm. uh, my receiver will only be able to receive what it transmits. So that's another indicator that I have learned to use, that what I see in front of me that charges me up is an indicator, good, bad, whatever. It's, it's letting me know where I sit on the spectrum of my own evolution. And if there's some, um, you know, plucky places, uh, I look at it on the spectrum and say, well, you know, I'm, I, it's no different from the part of me that is, feels petty and, and I can have compassion for that. And I can, I, I can not um, beat up on myself, castigate myself for having that kind of behavior. And I, and I'm improving. So I just keep day to day recognize uh, my shortcomings and then recognize that I am everywhere I go. Um, I see people who are challenged by the same silly things that we're all challenged by. How do we know the difference between intuition, guidance from spirit, and our ego or personal agenda? I get this question all the time. And it's to be expected because we all have um, a mind, okay? And that mind oftentimes goes into analyzing and questioning and doubting. And that's just part of having um, the human experience, okay, with a mind. But we all also have a soul, which is where our intuitive knowing lies, and we are all born with intuition. It's our sixth sense, okay? And so the, the key here is, is giving less weight to the mind thoughts and more to the, um, the soul thoughts or knowing. And so um, prayer and meditation is, you know, a really powerful practice that allows us to shift out of the analytical mind the noise, the static that it creates, okay? And to quiet that mind, to get into connecting with that still voice within us. And that's where our intuition lies. So prayer meditation also holds the power to shift our energy and raise our vibration. And that opens the door to your higher self and intuition, okay? So this is where listening to and trusting our intuition comes into play recognizing that it's not our mind always talking. A lot of times it's our intuition. But the key here, and this is what it all comes down to, is learning the difference between a mind thought and a divine thought. So I'm going to break this down for you. A mind thought is a trailed thought versus a divine thought, which is an out of blue impression that comes quickly and easily, and you cannot make any sense of where it came from. Okay, so a mind thought, you think one thought, it leads to another thought, which leads you to another thought, you go down a rabbit hole of thoughts, and then you end at this conclusion, whatever it is. And then a divine thought, that is where it's succinct, it's simple, it comes and goes, it's not repeating over and over like a broken record. Okay, it's really, truly that quick and fast. And you usually have no idea why it showed up, but it did. So let me give you an example. Here's a mind thought example. So one day I'm working from home. I live across the street from my, my daughter's elementary school. Okay. And it's recess time and I can hear kids outside playing and screaming. And that leads me to think of my daughter, Haven. And then I start wondering how she's doing her first week of school. Then my head goes to... I wonder if she's sad. I hope she's not sitting alone at lunch. And then I start worrying about her. And that leads me to, I think she needs me. Okay. Clearly a story that I created in, concocted in my mind. And okay, something that I think we all do from time to time. Versus a divine thought. 
So I'm working from home. I'm writing my book. I'm not thinking about my kids at all, okay? And out of nowhere, my mind goes to Haven, followed by a feeling something's off. It's that mother's intuition. So I then act without even thinking about it on that feeling. And I just go sit outside on my front porch because I can hear these kids on the playground for recess. Well, the next thing I know, Haven literally comes running over to me across the street, crying and yelling, saying she really misses me and just needs a big mama hug. So the teacher was amazed that I just was magically there. I somehow appeared because Haven had a really rough morning, I guess, and she had been debating all morning if she should call me. Well, she probably didn't know who I was and what I do, but no need. She didn't even need to physically pick up the phone because I got the psychic memo, right, before she even had the chance to do so. And that is a true story. So the moral of this story is I could have ignored that thought, but I recognized it along with that feeling something's off, something's not right. And then I followed it because I've learned better. Just trust it. Don't doubt. And then I was able to get the validation that it really was divine and not my mind. So this, my friends, is why we want to pay attention to our inner world of ideas and thoughts and feelings, because our feelings act as our guidance. It's the greatest gift we have, and they may not always make sense or add up on paper, but they don't need to. You just need to be humble and trust that sometimes your higher self and something bigger than ourselves is running the show, and it has our back, and it's there to help us. And so it's a really great idea to put all your ego fears and anxiety aside and just humbly open up to receive it. I thought I would share with you um, one of the tools out of my toolbox that I use daily, and I call it the trifecta check, okay? It's a head, heart, gut check. And this plays into our three centers of intelligence, Um, For anybody who has studied the Enneagram, it's called the three Enneagram triads, heart, head, and gut triads, okay? But basically, what this comes down to is while we have access to all three centers, depending on how we're wired, okay, will determine which center is dominant for you, all right? Because we're all different and which one speaks the loudest to you. Um, So... Basically, it's a good idea to check in with all three centers, head, heart, and gut, okay, when trying to get a clear read on any situation or person. So the way you do this is you pause, you take a few deep breaths to get present and still, and then you really just pay attention to and lean into what you're feeling. Just sense what's coming up for you. So number one, you check in with your head, and you just mentally ask yourself, what is my first thought on this situation or person? Your first thought is your divine thought, okay? That's intuition. After that, usually your mind starts telling you stories. So that's where you go into the trailed thoughts. The second step, check in with your heart. So at this point, you want to drop out of your head and get into your heart. It helps sometimes if you place your hand on your heart and you're drawing the energy out of your head down into your body, into your heart, and then ask yourself, what is coming up for me emotionally? when I feel into the situation or person. So if you're feeling contraction or tightness or just something feels off, that's usually a red flag or a no, okay? However, if you're feeling expansion, you're feeling lightness or even just a sense of neutrality, that's a, it's a green light or a yes. And then the third step is check in with your gut. So you take a few deep belly breaths to really drop into your gut and ask yourself, what is my initial instinct or hit? Or what is my gut feeling on this situation? Okay. Oftentimes it doesn't make sense on paper, but you just know something to be true. You can feel it in your bones or in your gut. We were talking about that veil being thin. These are manifesting times. Yes. Bring your A game. That's right. And, you know, maybe we can talk about the quantum field a little bit. Sure. I think a lot of people um, have a hard time wrapping their head around time Mm. as linear. Mm -hmm. And so do you want to talk a little bit about how we can tap into the quantum field, what it is, how we manifest with it? Yeah. I started tapping in through dreams 
I actually didn't realize that that's what they were showing me. I kept trying to understand why I was having repetitive dreams over and over and over again about scenarios that I thought I resolved. <laughs> I really had to question what was going on here. Mm -hmm. And then I sat in meditation and I heard, you're seeing timelines, you're seeing timelines. So they really had to explain it to me. Um, my mom taught me a little bit about it when I was younger, you know, that there are different, we can, we can leap time frames. The way I look at it now is, and what my guides have said to me is time is obviously an illusion and that we can tap into different storylines through meditation, dreams, writings, allow yourself visions, mm -hmm. allow yourself to go there, downloads. And in order to be superpower co-creators, we can understand and take the best of those moments and apply them into your current space. So again, here we go. We go back into this, this area here. This is how I've done it. I don't know about yourself, but this is kind of the style that they've given me. And I try not to do too much jumping or astral flight. I really prefer to do more receiving visually uh, because I feel like they know my contracts really well and they're accessing my higher self to understand them on a deeper level. And so it's become this interesting relationship, yeah. this interesting orchestrated co-creation that's going on. But you are, an, you have to understand that you are an active part in that. Mm -hmm. And when you realize that, then you, you can truly understand why things are happening or why they're not happening. And you have to let go of time frames altogether and understand that it really boils down to just energy and your energy is process, being processed through thought and feelings and what you're putting out there into the universe. I find it really cool. How do you do it? That's how I, that's kind yeah. of how I've broken it down. Wow. What about you? Yeah. Like a hundred questions just came up for me through just that, but okay. So first of all, what my guides have taught me, okay, so the quantum field holds all future, past, present potentiality, right? Yes, yes. And we can tap into that. And so if what my guides recently have been showing me, if I can conceive of a thought, if something comes to me, it means it's already available in the quantum field. But like you said, you can't just read it into being, you have to bring it into being. So yes. you have to take constructive steps and, you know, so there is a delicate balance between showing up and doing your part, meeting the universe halfway with clear intention and mm -hmm. then surrendering and letting go and then letting the quantum field and spirit bring you into it, right? The surrendering is huge. Thanks for bringing that part up. Yes. The surrendering has been, I, I always say, if you're manifesting and you're learning how to do this type of work, set it and forget it. Yes. Allow yourself, you, you've been shown what it is. And then I will say to spirit, I see what you're showing me. I see what was, I see what is, I see what could be. Show me that from the greatest good, the most highest good of all concern. Allow me to follow the path or start to walk through the path that will bring us, uh, bring myself to it, uh, my highest form as well. Yes. And, and that's that. And then you have to surrender over to it and believe that the universe will re reveal what needs to be done. I okay. spent a lot of time chasing what needs to be done, mm. thinking that I needed to be, um, uh, you know, I really needed to be, that's the word I'm looking for. I didn't receive as much as I wanted to. I was really trying to chase it down and make things fit maybe where they didn't it. need to be right because I had this vision of what, what I thought it was supposed to look like. And what I learned is I let go of the vision and I held on to the feeling, which is much better for me. So that, that, that that's way exactly you can yourself into the space. Yeah. Because exactly, you've got to let go of control. Like you said, mm -hmm. set it and forget it, set the intention. But what my guides have shown me how I do it is I get into head heart coherence. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's really about getting present and then feeling your way into the creation of whatever the desire is that you're trying to bring in, whatever the highest timeline is you're trying to go down. Yep. And so that's why for me, it works with meditation. You know, yes. so some days I'm walking and meditating. Some days I'm sitting and meditating. Some days I go to yoga and they say, set an intention for your practice. I'm like, put me on the highest timeline. Bring me into alignment 
with my highest self, highest timeline. And then through the movement, right, I'm moving out blocks and I'm trying to empty my vessel to get neutral, to get centered, to get present. And so what my guides have talked a lot about is the feeling is really what we're after because, right, we want, we have this electromagnetic field and that becomes our frequency, our vibration. Mm -hmm. And so we need in, you know, the law of attraction, we're going to attract whatever we're vibrating at. And so we want to get out of our heads, out of the limited thinking or false beliefs sometimes that, you know, keep us on the lower timelines. Yeah. Um, or, Speaking or into existence. Yeah. I've, I've been working with speaking at, in the now as if it's already happening. Oh, and I've been bragging about you. Um, we had a conversation a couple of months ago and you said to me, oh, I, I was manifesting something and you said, and then some. And I can, so I have been adding on and then some to everything. And I, and I speak things into existence, whether it's health, work, relationships, money, no matter what it is, I am talking about it, getting direct downloads from my guides. My guides are incredibly directive. They're pretty straightforward and uh, accessing what I know to be true. And then we get into this cool storyline together. And then I say, okay, I got it. I've heard a little bit about the Enneagram. Can you explain how it is used as a spiritual tool? So some of you are familiar with the program that I recently released with co-creating it with my brother, B, and it's called Nine Lives, okay? And so I'm going to explain just a little bit um, about this, but if, for more information, we will link it to this. You can check out Nine Lives. It's an in-depth program. It does a deep dive into everything Enneagram, and it's amazing, like Truly, the reason I wanted to partner with him is because it's a tool he offered me when I was going through a very difficult, challenging time not too long ago. And it literally changed the trajectory of how I dealt with my soul contract homework, the lessons that I found myself in a spin cycle around. Like, why do I keep revisiting the issues around this subject in particular, okay, manifesting itself in different relationship after relationship? And it, you know, at the end of the day, what spirit always says is this, when we cross over, we have to be fully transparent with ourselves and our team and spirit. They hold up a mirror to us and we have to take full responsibility and accountability for all of our thoughts, words, and deeds, all of our life choices. Well, what I've realized is I want to get this right now. I don't want to keep repeating Groundhog's Day (laughs) over and over and over and into other lifetimes. Okay. Okay. I own it and I'll, I'm like, how? How do I do it? Well, that's when B showed up in my life with this amazing spiritual tool. And that's why I felt like this is life changing. I want to share it with anyone who's feeling resonance with it as well. So, what is it? Um, unlike any other personality typing systems that only deal with identifying who you are, okay? Kind of like Myers Briggs. There's, a, there's so many, I'm not going to name them, but you know what I'm talking about. The Enneagram goes one step further and it deals with why we do what we do, okay? So it's a system that helps to point out our shadow side and it shows us where we go when we're unconscious, when we're making choices from shadow and when we're in our reactive human nature, okay? So that's really when we're tired, cranky, um, you name it, we go unconscious and we go on autopilot versus when we're aligned with our higher selves, okay? We're in a healthy, grounded place and we're making choices from the frequency of light and operating from a more grounded, responsive approach. And in understanding our shadows or the life lessons or what I like to call our homework as part of our soul contract that we signed up for and that we are here to heal and balance, we can use that knowledge as power And we can choose to proactively work with this system, the Enneagram, to help free us when we get in our own way, okay? So I like to consider it as just one more spiritual tool tool for that toolbox that shows us a pathway out of any spin cycles of pain and suffering and struggle that we may be experiencing. 
allowing us to become more conscious, awakened, and self-actualized spiritual beings having this human experience, okay? Because after all, that is the entire goal of our soul. We are here to do our work, to raise our consciousness and collectively the consciousness of the planet to a higher state of light and love. And when we fully integrate and embody this higher light and love, being true to who we really are, which is we are emanating the divine spark within us, we are sparks of divinity, we continue the journey of our soul's growth and evolution, okay? And so the Enneagram, to boil it down, the Enneagram centers around what is called the holy idea, okay? Which is the essential spiritual energy that guided us into this world. We can also refer to this as our core purpose, as part of our soul contract, okay? And this holy idea, or core purpose, represents one of nine fundamental energies or emanations of divinity. So there's nine number types, okay? And while all of these energies exist within of us, one of them will be our dominant core type, and that will strongly resonate with us more than the other ones. So the holy idea of that number okay, it acts as a beacon. It guides us on our soul's journey and purpose within this lifetime. So it's essentially why we incarnated. And the truth is we have all nine aspects, all nine numbers, okay, are within us, which fall into a ranking order. So if you take the test, you'll get your top, you know, hand, you'll get all of them ranked in order, but then you'll get your top, you know, essentially the three, the head, heart, gut triad that you'll want to work with and look at. Um, But despite that, one of them will be your dominant core type. And so it's key to not only look at that one type, but to look at all of it holistically, considering aspects within yourself um, that resonate in order to live a balanced 360 life, okay? And so if you're really curious, this resonates. Um, You know, B and I wanted to make this more relatable and accessible to all of you, myself included. Um, And so... In that program, um, what we did is, you know, I downloaded a tremendous amount of information from my guides and spirit, and he took his wisdom and knowledge and all the training he's done over the years, on, including he's a rabbi and he's a therapist, okay? And so together, we have a balanced 360 mind-body-spirit um, program that you can use to work through your shadow, to move more into your light to become a healthier, balanced, spiritual being having this human experience and to do it with greater grace, ease, and flow. So if you're interested, if this resonates, we will link the information to the Nine Lives program. You can take the test to determine what your Enneagram makeup is and get more information. What I like about the Enneagram is it doesn't make me choose you know, it comes from a um, probably a spiritual path from Catholic mysticism and probably Sufism, probably Kabbalah. There's geometry, there's mathematics, there's physics. And so I, first of all, it's helped me because it's given me a framework or that roadmap that is holistic. And I don't have to say, I'm going to, you know, just go do Myers-Briggs, which is not a spiritual pathway, or I'm going to go do, you know, my Buddhist mindfulness practice, which is more of a spiritual. So this has helped me because I need both. And I say that because I see a lot of people who, you know, they want the math, divine masculine, divine feminine. And that's what this is for me at a big level. At a personal level, it's reminded me, and I'm sure this will take us into a deeper conversation. I am not an eight right? I react like an eight. Eight is where I go, challenger is where I go when I'm in fear, when I'm in scarcity in your language. Um, It's not my highest self. And so that has helped me because all the other systems I've ever partake or took, been involved with is reductionist. It reduces me. I am an INFJ. That's who you are. Or I am a yellow in this system or uh, that in the, the other system. The Enneagram does not tell you Rebecca Rosen, you are a nine. It says, Rebecca Rosen, when you're not operating the highest level of your divine nature, that's when you're imprisoned like a nine. Yeah, it's the reactive side or shadow side of our personality, which we all have. 
It's part of, which leads into soul contracts. It's part of the earth school experience. We are all here. We chose to be here. We chose certain life lessons, homework we have to do. And this Enneagram has been such a priceless tool for me to look to when I'm in my shadow. Um, so I'm a self-preservation 925. And you can explain because, you know, we have all the numbers within us, but then we have our top ones. Head Is it head, heart, gut triad? Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll well, so, yes. okay. So I act like a nine. I feel like a two and I think like a five, right? And I'm a self-preservation. And, and that, what that is, is when things are out of my control, when I feel scared, when lots of change happens and I feel overwhelmed, sometimes my shadow comes up, I'm in my ego, and I go into my reactive nature of fight or flight, okay, because I feel threatened. But what it's done for me is that I've used it as a tool to step back, take a breath, get neutral, and then ask myself, from what frequency am I making this choice from? right? Am I in fear or am I in love? If I, am I choosing from the frequency of light or shadow? Yes. And so it's just, for me, knowledge is power. When you have the information, okay, in my nine, this is what happens when I'm not in alignment and I react. However, because we, and the reason we don't want to do that is, I mean, I think it's obvious. We want to come from our higher selves, but it's all about with our soul contracts. We don't want to incur more negative karma. We're here to neutralize, to balance, to heal karma, to align with our higher selves and to make choices from that higher self place, the frequency of light and love, right? And so I think as humans, we go unconscious. And when we, we get unconscious or come from our ego, we go into autopilot, which is the reaction. Thanks for joining me for this episode of Small Medium at Large. For more information about my offerings and events, and for additional resources on your spiritual journey, please visit my website, RebeccaRosen.com. You can also follow me on social media by searching at Medium Rebecca Rosen on Facebook and Instagram. As always, I am wishing you brightest blessings and all love.